Gain incredible ground clearance and uncompromised performance by installing Rough Country 6-inch non-torsion drop lift kit for the Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra 1500 pickup trucks. Before you begin installation, review the included instructions and make sure you have all the required parts and hardware before proceeding. You'll also want to verify that you have all the proper tools before disassembling your vehicle. For more helpful pre-installation tips, visit roughcountry.com slash before you lift. To begin installation, using a 7 8 deep well socket, remove the wheels. Measure the threads showing on the torsion bar adjuster bolt. Mark the position of the torsion bars on the control arm and torsion bar key. Using a torsion bar tool, relieve the pressure from the torsion bar adjuster bolt and remove the bolt and threaded block. Be extremely careful when loading and unloading the torsion bars. Using a 15 mm socket, remove the factory lower skid plate. Use a 10 mm socket to remove the brake line from the upper control arm and knuckle. Unplug the ABS wire from the frame rail. Remove the tie rod end from the stock knuckle using an 18 mm wrench. Strike the side of the knuckle where the tie rod mounts to dislodge the tapered tie rod end. Using an 18 mm socket, unbolt the brake caliper and rotor. Secure the brake caliper up out of the way. Using a 35 mm socket, remove the CV nut from the knuckle. Using an 18 mm wrench for the upper ball joint and a 24 mm deep well socket for the lower, remove the ball joint nuts. Using a hammer, hit the knuckle until the ball joint is free. Remove the knuckle. Remove the three factory bolts that hold the wheel bearing to the stock knuckle. Remove the wheel bearing and dust cover using a 15 mm socket. Using a 13 mm deep well socket, remove the sway bar link from the lower control arm and sway bar. Using a 15 mm wrench, remove the upper shock nut. Using a 21 mm socket and wrench, remove the lower shock bolt. Remove the shock. Using a 15 mm socket, remove the six inner CV bolts. Set the CV shaft aside for reuse. Using an 18 mm wrench and 24 mm socket, remove the lower control arm hardware followed by the lower control arm itself. Support the differential with a floor jack. Mark the front drive shaft and yoke for reference. Remove the front drive shaft from the differential using 11 mm wrench. Secure the drive shaft out of the way. Remove the differential skid plate. Remove the differential bolt on the driver's side using a 21 mm wrench. Cut the frame with a reciprocating saw. Remove the differential vent hose, differential plug, and the plug clips from the axle. Remove the upper differential bolt that secures the driver's side of the differential to the frame using a 21 mm wrench. Remove the two nuts on the passenger side that secures the differential to the frame using a 21 mm wrench. With assistance, lower the differential and remove from the vehicle. Cut the upper differential mount off using a reciprocating saw, taking care not to damage the diff. To allow for clearance on the frame, trim the cooling fins using a hand grinder. Cut the factory cross member. Install the bushings and sleeves and the differential brackets mount. Install the bracket on the differential with factory hardware using a 15 mm socket. Tighten to 35 foot pounds. Install the rear cross member with the supplied 5 8 inch by 5 and a half inch bolts, washers, and nuts, being sure to install the bolts from the front to the back. Install the passenger side differential bracket with the taller end of the taper positioned toward the front of the vehicle using the factory hardware and a 21 mm wrench. With assistance, raise the differential into place and install the rear mount of the differential into the new cross member mount with stock hardware. Reinstall the passenger side of the differential into the new mounts with the supplied half inch by one and a half inch bolts, washers, and nuts. Install the differential bracket in the mounting tab on the back side of the front cross member. Install the front cross member with the supplied 5 8 by four and a half inch bolts, washers, and nuts. Bolt the differential to the front cross member. Tighten driver side rear differential bolt. Reinstall the drive shaft using the reference markings and secure using factory hardware. Tighten to 19 foot-pounds using an 11 mm wrench. Pull the differential vent hose that was previously disconnected down to install in the stock location and reinstall the differential plug and wiring clips. Install the supplied sleeve and torsion bar bracket onto the lower control arm. Note the brackets are specific to the driver or passenger side. 
Using the bracket as a guide, mark the lower control arm for drilling. Drill a hole on the mark using a 17 30 second drill bit and reinstall the torsion bar bracket on the lower control arm. Tighten the supplied half inch by one and a half inch bolts, washers, and nuts using a 3 4 inch wrench. Install the lower control arms with the torsion bar drop brackets using the factory hardware and ensuring the bolts are installed front to rear. Tighten 5 8 inch cross member hardware to 154 foot pounds, 9 16 differential hardware to 114 foot pounds, and factory hardware on the passenger differential bracket to 75 foot pounds. Using a torsion bar tool, load the torsion bars using the mark made earlier as a reference. Install the skid plate using the supplied 3 8 inch bolts, washers, and nuts. The rear of the skid plate will be installed by lining up the holes in the cross member and installing the supplied 3 8 inch self-tapping bolts. Tighten using a 9 16 wrench. Place the supplied CV spacers in between the differential and the shaft and secure with the supplied 10 mm by 65 mm socket head cap bolts using an 8 mm Allen wrench. Tighten hardware to 58 foot pounds. Install the front shocks in the lower factory location using factory hardware and a 21 mm wrench. Install the shock in the upper mount with the supplied stem bushings, cup washers, and nuts using a 9 16 wrench. Install the supplied sway bar link bracket on the lower control arm using the supplied 12 mm by 35 mm bolt and flange lock nut. Tighten using an 18 mm and 19 mm wrench. Install the upper sway bar link bracket on the sway bar with the supplied 12 mm by 35 mm bolt and flange lock nut. Install the sway bar link in the upper bracket with the supplied 12 mm by 65 mm bolt and flange lock nut. Tighten using an 18 mm and 19 mm wrench. Install the sway bar link in the lower bracket and secure with the supplied 12 mm by 65 mm bolt and flange lock nut. Using Loctite, install the bearing with the factory hardware on the new knuckle. Tighten to 133 foot-pounds. Install the new knuckles with the stock ball joint hardware and tighten using an 18 mm and 24 mm wrench. Reinstall the CV nut. Install the brake caliper with factory hardware. Using a 10 mm wrench, install the brake line on the knuckle. Reconnect the ABS wire. Install the tie rod in and the knuckle with the stock hardware using a 19 mm wrench. Tighten to 50 foot pounds. Remove the factory rear shocks using a 21 mm wrench and discard. Remove the factory U bolts. Install the block on the axle ensuring the block and axle pin align. Install the supplied 7 16 U bolts, washers, and nuts on the leaf springs securing the block to the springs. Install the supplied rear shocks with the factory bolts and nuts using a 21 mm wrench. Install the wheels and tires, tightening the lug nuts to 85 foot-pounds. Lower the vehicle to the ground. Tighten the control arm and shock absorber hardware. After installing any suspension component, it is advised that you have a qualified alignment center give your vehicle a proper alignment immediately.